Now it's time to bring it around town. Bring it around town. Then you do this, then this, and this, then that, and this, and that, and this, and that, and then. Hey! Who blew this bubble? Yeah, uh-huh. Ladies, gentlemen, and tarnished of all ages, are you, like me, a little weenie who likes blowing bubbles? Ever since I've come across the Envoy enemies in Elden Ring, I have felt a bit of an affinity towards them. They're extremely round, and I love round things, and they are musicians, which I am too. They blow bubbles as a form of combat, which is silly, and I love silly stuff. But what if I told you one of these silly stuffs was actually an extremely ridiculously powerful stuff? One that probably should be nerfed, because it just does way more damage than it has any right to. Though, who am I to speak? Maybe it is intentional that this trumpet can deal upwards of 20,000 damage with one press of the skill. Maybe they wanted this to be absolutely busted. Maybe I'm the crazy one here. I, either way, it's here and I, I fucking love it and I absolutely will be using it as long as I can justify it. As longhorn as I can justify it, that's right. The main focus of today's build, if you hadn't worked it out, is a weapon called the Envoy's Longhorn and a little ditty of a skill called called Bubble Shower. This fires out a load of bubbles in a cone in front of you, which float for a little bit, and then drop to the ground, popping and dealing damage to anything they collide with. Honestly, the biggest issue you will be having with this weapon will be getting every single bubble to hit, which is less of an issue when you consider the insane amount of damage that even half of the shower does. It's worth noting, pretty much everything I am showing you right now is in New Game Plus, so if it looks like an early boss, it is, it just has a fair amount more health and damage. What you want to look at is the actual damage damage number that is happening. For whatever reason, the scaling on this weapon's skill is just nuts, and of course, on top of its own nut scaling, it happens to have a few really nice synergies with other items to buff it into the stratosphere of damage, capable of one-shotting bosses that really don't expect to be one-shot. Today I'll be showing you how to get this horn for yourself, the stat spread that you want while wearing it, the other things that you should pair with it yourself and how to get those, as well as an optimal strategy for engagement. The horn itself is a farmed drop from the medium-sized Envoy enemies. You can find one of them right near the East Capital Rampart site of Grace in Lindell, the capital city, when you have reached there, and there are a number of them in the branches of the optional Halig Tree dungeon at the end of the game. If you want to make farming them faster, equip anything that increases your arcane attribute. Use silver pickled fowl feet, which you can craft after getting the cookbook from the smoldering church in the northwest of Kaled, and then the silver scarab talisman, which is found in the hidden path to the Halig Tree dungeon by jumping off of the land in the middle of the big open room to land on the invisible floor. Head towards the opening in front of you, break the illusion wall in that room, and then open the chest to find this talisman. Using these items, you will have an easier time farming the next bits. And in fact, if you choose to farm the ones in the Halic Tree, you are already right next to our next major item of note, the Envoy Helmet. I've been wearing this for fashion purposes since I found it personally because, of course, spheres are all the rage. However, if you look at the description of this item, you'll see that it actually boosts all bubbles based skills, which of course, Bubble Shower is. This works out to being around a 15% boost to the damage, which is pretty magnificent if I do say so myself. The specific location of this helmet is in the Halig Tree Dungeon. From the Halig Tree Canopy Site of Grace, head forwards past the three Bubble Boys, drop down and run past the medium Bubble Boy and take a left, before dropping to the thick branch below. Run up the middle one with the massive Bubble Boy at the end of it, and behind him will lay on the ground your lovely new spherical hat. After this, you'll want the Sacred Scorpion Charm Talisman, which boosts all holy damage by about 12.5%. To get this one for yourself, head to the Smoldering Church in Kaled that I mentioned earlier up in the northwest, and you'll be invaded by an NPC, turn them to dust, and this will be laying where they once were. Next up is the Ritual Sword Talisman, which raises your damage by around 10% when you're at maximum health. This one doesn't specifically make this build better than it makes other builds, but obviously given how much damage this build does, it isn't weird to try and get as much 
much as possible in the first hit of damage that you deal, which the talisman helps with quite a bit. To get it for yourself, you'll have to head to the Lux Ruins over in the Altus Plateau, right near the Aired Tree Gazing Hill site of Grace. Find the staircase in the back left of the ruins, which descends to a boss, defeat the boss, and gain the talisman for yourself. And then we also have the Wondrous Flask Upgrade Holy Shrouding Cracked Tear, which ups your holy damage dealt by around 20% for a short period of time. Of course, these bubbles are holy as hell. To get it for yourself, you'll need to murder the Aired Tree Avatar guarding the minor Aired Tree in the east of Liernia, up in the cliffs. Next, you'll want to get yourself any seal in the game so you can cast incantations. The upgrade level of the seal doesn't matter, neither does the scaling of the seal. We are casting one thing with it and one thing only. It is a buff, and buffs are not boosted by scaling, so it really doesn't matter. The buff in question is called Golden Vow, which boosts your damage by around 15% and also gives you 10% damage reduction for 80 seconds after casting. To get this incantation for yourself, head to the base of Mount Gelmir on the eastern side, specifically the Corpse Stench Shack at the end of the pathway that you can reach from that side of the mountain. Right inside of the shack, on a corpse sitting upright, will be the incantation needed to make this even stronger. Next is possibly the most important talisman, but it requires quite a bit of a quest line done to acquire it, and that is the Shard of Alexander. This boosts all weapon skill damage by around 20%. Of course, this counts as a weapon skill, and so it gets boosted. To acquire this for yourself, you must first complete the Radon boss fight in Kaled, and afterwards go to the site of Grace that you unlock post-death, to find Alexander, the great Jar Warrior, feasting upon the dead. Talk to him for a little bit, and then he'll move to Liernia, south of the Artist Shack site of Grace, just past the pond and over the hill, a little bit of a walk. He is stuck in the ground, and he needs some help. The help comes in the form of oil pots, which you can get a crafting recipe for from this merchant located in Seofra River. Once you have an oil pot, launch it at his face, and then slap him out, and then he'll move on to his next location over in the Altus Plateau. From the Seethwater Terminus Site of Grace, head over to the west into the Pool of Magma, and in the back left of that area, you will now see Alexander wanting to talk to you once again. Do so, and he will relocate one final time. This time, he is in the Crumbling Fair in Missoula region, a late-game unlock area, and specifically from the Dragon Temple Altar Site of Grace, head out the north exit, jump down to the left, and progress along the path until you reach the corridor full of statues. Run past the guy in the back and up the stairs on the right to find yourself more or less in front of a stone sword key door, open it and go up the elevator inside to find a site of grace. From here, progress onwards and upwards, around the side and over the top, to find Alexander sitting upon some broken ruins. Have a chat with him and then have some combat with him as well. Upon his defeat, he will drop for you the Shard of Alexander Talisman. And that is it for the standard things that you will absolutely want to use. However, there are a couple of bonuses you can get if you are far enough into the game. The main one being the Scepter of the All-Knowing, which comes from a main story boss in the City of Ash. If you don't know what that is, you don't want to ask. Answering it would be a spoiler. When you reach the area, you'll definitely know it. This weapon being held in your offhand is great, as you can two-hand it for a short period to cast the skill Knowledge Above All, which significantly reduces the damage resistance of you and also anyone in range to any kind of magic or holy. Obviously, the self-affliction part isn't great, but apply this to an enemy, and of course, they take way more holy damage after the fact. Why is this an optional item? Well, mostly because it has a 21 intelligence requirement to use, which is quite high for this build as we aren't focusing int in the slightest. So this is more for when you have leveled up so much you don't even know where to put the stats anymore. But when you use it, it really does add some massive pow. Now, you may have noticed that I only told you three talismans to use. That is because the last one is a bit of a free slot. But if you want my personal recommendation, it is Merica's Source Seal which is found in the Hallig Tree region as well. From the prayer room site of Grace, head out forwards to where you can see a pillar sticking out to your right, jump to it and then fall to the main structure of said pillar, drop down to the bridge and then down to the next pillar along to go all the way down to floor level. From here, progress all the way to the back to find a room opened by a stone sword key, inside of which is the talisman that you seek. As for the stats that you'll want on your actual character itself, first things first, make sure that you have enough endurance to carry the weapon, the seal that you chose, whatever armor you want to wear for fashion, along with the Envoy Helmet specifically, and then the Scepter of the All-Knowing if you are using that as well, while being at medium load so you can roll properly. Then you want to push Faith up to at least 40, Strength to 23 so you can hold the horn in one hand, Dexterity to 20, which is more than necessary to wield the weapon, but 20 is one of the soft caps for skills, affecting Ash of War damage, so it is nice to hit when we are able to
to easily do so. From here, boost your vigor up as necessary and boost your faith up as much as possible as well, up to a maximum of 80 as this is the hard cap. Get these stats, use this equipment, line up the combos and watch the magic happen. Or I guess the holy happen. The combo, in case you haven't pieced it together, cast Golden Vow before engaging, then use the Scepter of the All-Knowing when in range of the enemy, which is quite a long range by the way. Use a Mana Potion if you need to, pop your Flask of Wondrous Physic, and then spam the Ash of War until the enemy is defeated. Sound easy? That's because it is. Where this thing truly, truly excels though is big bosses. The bigger the boss, the higher the chance that you will hit as many bubbles as physically possible, and when you hit every bubble is when it goes absolutely nuts. That said, you can still hit for 8,000 on medium-sized targets that aren't weak to holy, and easily 4,000 on small ones, which is still sort of ridiculous damage for one press of a button. When it comes to PvP, this thing is uh, unreliable, to be polite. If you manage to hit the bubbles, it absolutely one-shots anything that you'll come across. The damage is insane, and that is why it works in PvE so well. However, it is really, really easy to dodge by a human brain if they know what the attack animation looks like at all. And then, once you are spamming the Ash of War, it is super easily punished with backstabs as you are rotation locked during the ability, so this is definitely more of a boss killing super build. That said, it isn't really just for bosses either. It still does multiple thousand damage per cast on random trash enemies. You can use this to clear a level two as long as you have the mana to function it. And even then, honestly, if you feel like giving them a smack with it as a melee weapon, the damage is actually super reliable there too. Really, I cannot overstate how busted this thing can get. The weapon can do over 20,000 damage pressing the button once, which is insanity. It does it on a repeating, spammable ability. It works on anything that isn't straight up resistant to holy damage. The weapon is good even when you run out of mana, and it is buffed by things that affect barely anything else in the game, such as the helmet, which just makes it even more juicy. I don't know if there is a single other thing that I can say about this to make you try this build if you aren't already convinced though. I, I mean, I would have been convinced by the first 15 seconds, personally. You get to use bubbles as an offensive weapon, and not only that, but it is genuinely, very seriously a contender for the strongest PvE weapon in the entire game, capable of one-shotting things that were not meant to be one-shot. I've been Cotton Dinosaur from Rage Gaming Videos, and this has been the Envoy Longhorn Bard build, full of all the goodies to maximize this busted bubble blower. Are you going to try this for yourself or simply use it as inspiration for something else? Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye